There is a long line outside this butcher store every day. Because his meat is addictive, the meat doesn't come from a slaughterhouse. The couple hunts humans themselves. They make human flesh into sausages and hams. What makes them so crazy? There is a couple in a small French town. The man's name was Vincent. The woman's name was Sophie. They opened a butcher store. Originally, the business of the store was quite good, but Vincent was too obsessed with the quality of meat. Every piece of fresh meat that passed through his hands had to have a conversation with him. He would beat the meat and talk to it at the same time. When he found a good piece of meat, he would caress it more gently before he would sell it. This causes customers to buy meat every time they have to wait a long time. Slowly, their business is getting worse and worse. Sophie would send it to customers who waited too long as a token of apology. But after a while Sophie finally couldn't take it anymore. She complained that Vincent was too concerned about the meat, which led to poor business. He also left her out in the cold. Vincent was used to his wife's complaints. He didn't pay any attention to what she said. When this store was about to close, a group of people in animal masks came in. They were a group of extreme vegetarians. Each one of them had a baseball bat in his hand. They went on a rampage, smashing up the butcher store, and they poured red paint all over Sophie. Vincent couldn't stand it. He rushed out and grabbed a single masked man and pinned him down, and ripped off his hood. It turned out to be a young man. Before Vincent can question him, his accomplice returns to rescue him and escapes with him. A disheveled Vincent and Sophie were left in place. The vandalized store needed to be reorganized, so they can take a few days off. The couple went to visit their friend Mark. Mark and Vincent are sort of peers. He is a shrewd businessman and can sell poor quality meat for a good price. He also plans to open a chain of stores. The couple has plenty of time for romance. Sophie is envious of this. She thinks of the man at home who is obsessed with meat every day. He doesn't make money, that's all. He didn't even have time to go out with her for romance. Sophie is furious. Mark heard that Vincent's butcher store was being harassed by vegetarians. Mark took out a gun and gave it to Vincent. He said that if you have this gun, they won't dare to come and cause trouble anymore. Even though Vincent didn't have a gun license yet. Vincent accepted the gift anyway. On the drive home, his wife's anger was all over Vincent. It made it hard for Vincent to concentrate on his driving. When he passed a man on a bicycle, Vincent looked in the rearview mirror and found the man on the bike was the vegetarian who vandalized the butcher store a few days ago. At this moment, he also found the outlet for his anger. He decided to take revenge on this man. He braked hard and stopped the car in front of him. Then he quickly backed up. The car suddenly hit something. The couple frowned for a moment. They waited for a while before finally getting out of the car to check the situation. The man's body turned out to be so fragile. He was already lying still in front of the car. Vincent was terrified. He decided to call the police first. Sophie said she didn't want to be separated from Vincent. Why don't we pull the body back first? Sophie always watches the Law Channel. So she's very familiar with how crimes are committed. She encouraged Vincent to cut up the body into pieces and then dispose of it. Cutting up meat is Vincent's forte. He put his body on this lap, but the first time you cut up a human being, there's still some resistance. But once he makes the first cut, the rest is easy. He grabs a variety of knives and kiss to work. He even used a saw. The dog was salivating at the sight. Vincent wasn't cheap either. He cut off two ears and threw them to the dog. The dog quickly ate it. It seems that the meat tastes good. It was late. When Vincent finished dividing the meat, he was so tired that he fell asleep on the couch. The next morning the store opened. A regular customer came to buy the meat. She said that the ham Sophie gave him earlier was good. Vincent cut up some slices of the human meat. He had cut up last night and handed them to Sophie. Sophie tasted it and thought it was different from the previous one. The taste of this meat was better. Vincent explained that this was the new pork from overseas. The customer listened to the recommendation and bought some. But the customer went back and shared the news with his neighbors. Everyone was impressed by the meat. The meat in Vincent's store was quickly snapped up. Although the business was so good today, Sophie was not happy. She thought this was strange and unusual. Vincent confessed to her that the real source of the meat was the guy he bumped into yesterday. Sophie not only did not blame Vincent, instead, she thought it was a better idea. She asked Vincent to taste the meat as well. After Vincent tasted it, he felt that the previous meat didn't taste good anymore. They worked out how to get more of this meat. A bold idea was born in Sophie's mind. 
the butcher's baby daughter had found a boyfriend. Ironically, her boyfriend was a vegetarian. They looked at their future son-in-law and didn't know how to serve him. He doesn't eat eggs because it's a hen's baby. He doesn't drink milk either because it's hard for the cow to produce milk. The couple was at a loss as to what to do. They finally made him a cup of coffee and passed it off. However, the daughter adored this strange man. After they left, Sophie's resentment towards vegetarians grew even more. She decided to show her displeasure by taking action. The couple went to a vegetarian restaurant in search of a meat source. Fat people can't be meat because it's too fatty. Neither could the skinny ones. They had no fat. Old people can't because their meat is too hard. Women and children don't work as raw materials either. They pick and choose, but they don't find the right target. The waiter brought the menu and prompted the two of them to order. Vincent, at first glance, this is obviously a vegetarian restaurant, but the menu was full of meat dishes. The waiter didn't know how to explain, so he called the chef. The two of them saw a bright light. Tall and strong chef in their eyes is a good pile of good meat. They waited around the restaurant until the restaurant was closed. The chef packed his things and went home. Vincent took a kitchen knife and rushed straight to. This scared the chef ran away in a panic. It's okay to fail the first time. The couple did not get discouraged. Sophie decided to look for inspiration from the TV show again. The conclusion she drew from the show was to attract the prey to a deserted place and then capture it. The next day, they went to the party dressed as vegetarians. It's easier to get the prey by getting inside the enemy. Vincent's costume gets him the approval of the party goers. Sophie also attracts Joshua, a creepy guy. Joshua invites Vincent and Sophie to have some fun. After discussing the matter, the two decide to kill Joshua, although he is a bit ugly. But maybe his meat will taste good. Joshua leads them to a parking lot. However, there were already two people waiting for them. They saw the crowd and tried to slip away. When they heard about their plan, Vincent was instantly intrigued. It turned out that Joshua was the same group that had vandalized Vincent's store before. This time they planned to vandalize Mark's butcher store. Vincent was already not convinced. This time he decided to join the action. Sophie had more concerns so she didn't go along. A group of people dressed up and wearing animal hoods went to Mark's store. Then they went on a rampage, destroying everything. The butcher's counter and shelves were smashed to pieces. Looking at Mark's picture on the wall, Vincent ripped it off. He also took it out on the Mark's head billboard. He did the job and it was like he didn't do anything. He was trying to get some fresh meat. And he was disappointed. Especially Sophie. She took it out on Vincent. Vincent was not to be outdone. The argument between them became more and more heated. Vincent felt that something was wrong and left early. Alexander at the restaurant saw the two fighting and thought he had a chance. So he went up to Sophie and hit on her. They chatted and learned that they had a lot of hobbies in common. Alexander even gave Sophie a ride home. When Alexander said goodbye, he said he was actually a vegetarian too. He only works in a steakhouse to earn money. Sophie suddenly thought that he was a ready-made prey. So she bites Alexander's tongue with a kiss. Then she takes him home to heal. Vincent is at home, depressed. When he sees another man, he's furious. Sophie spurs Vincent on and says, If you don't like it, kill him. Vincent immediately starts to sharpen his knife. Sophie smiled with relief. Vincent suddenly thought, If the animal is slaughtered under stress, it will secrete an acidic substance. This will cause the taste and texture of the meat to deteriorate. So we should let the animal be slaughtered in a happy mood. Sophie said that would be a good idea. So she got the oils and gave Alexander a relaxing massage. When she was done relaxing Alexander, Vincent had lost the urge to do it again. He's starting to lose his grip again. Sophie stimulated Vincent again with her words. Vincent gritted his teeth and rushed out. Alexander was already naked and waiting for Sophie. Vincent went up to him and slapped him in the face. Then he picked up the lamp and smashed it. Alexander was unable to react and lost his breath. Suddenly the door was opened. They were stunned. It turned out to be their daughter who had come home to complain about a fight with her boyfriend. They disguised the scene and said nice things to distract their daughter. Then their daughter was sent out of the house in a daze. Vincent was afraid that the meat would not be fresh after a long time. So he rushed to split the meat with his wife. The two of them smiled at each other. They finally found a common hobby. They fell asleep on the couch after a long night's work. Then they were woken up in the morning by Mark's phone ringing. Mark came to work in the morning to find the store had been broken into. So they called the police. The police came and looked at the scene. 
They ate bread and said they would deal with it as soon as possible. This attitude is a bit perfunctory, but he was very enthusiastic about Vincent and his wife. It turned out that he had eaten and was thinking about the new meat in Vincent's store. Because Vincent was closed for the time being, he couldn't eat it anymore. Vincent promised to give him fresh meat. Vincent had not yet started selling the new meat he had killed last night, so he gave some to the cop. This cop seems to be more interested in food than work, so much so that he didn't care about the missing persons in his district. Vincent's butcher store is back in business. Because of the delicious fresh meat, long lines of people lined up in front of their store to buy meat. They now specialize in hunting fresh meat. The vegetable picking sheds, the Kempi Meadows became their hunting grounds. On this day, they had an appointment with a vegetarian on the pretext of smashing up a butcher's store. This man was a hard patient. He saw Vincent with a butcher's knife and ran in fear. But he didn't take a few steps before he fell on the ground. Sophie and Vincent looked at each other and smiled. They didn't think they'd catch their new prey so easily. They took their new meat to Mark's house for a visit. Mark ate it and found Vincent's meat to be really good. So